Welcome everyone to this edition of Looking at Louisville. I'm Chaz. I'm Stacy. Now we're here in Jeffersonville, Indiana, across the bridge from Louisville at Shemp's Confectionery. It's now the sunny side of Louisville, right? Right. So why are we in Jeffersonville and what is a confectionery? We're in Jeffersonville because of Shemp's Confectionery. Uh, this is Valentine's Month and uh, this is one of the sweetest places to be. And it's just a hot skip and a jump uh, across the bridge. It took us about three minutes from downtown to get here. And they are known for a couple of things. Uh, one, they're red hots. Uh, to their bourbon balls, which you have to have that, right? And Majesca's, and we're going to hear a story about that. They've got a soda fountain, a candy museum. Uh, we're going to do it all here. And they're going to make the candy, and hopefully we'll get some samples. Oh, definitely. Are you ready? Well, after you, my son. Let's go. Hey, hey welcome to Shams. Thank you. I'm Stacy. How do you do? Chaz. This is Chaz. Chaz. This is our manager, Walt. Hi. Hi, I'm nice Walt. To meet you. Hey, nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. And welcome I'm Jill Shams. Welcome to Shimps. We've been right here in this spot since 1891, 117 years. I mean, we have our retail shop, we have our soda fountain, we have the deli lunchroom, we have a demonstration area, we have a museum, the thousands, thousands of pieces of American candy memorabilia. What are we waiting get, for? I know, let's go get started. Okay. We are making Cinnamon Red Hots, our signature piece. We have it boiling in the kettle and warm. Just exactly what is the temperature now? The temperature is uh, 290. 290 degrees, and what are we waiting for? 320. 320. Well, we hate to tell you this, but great-grandfather didn't have a thermometer, no. But what he did have was a little glass of ice water. He'd put his finger in the ice water. You know what's coming, don't you? He'd stand real close. He'd watch how the bubbles were cracking on the surface. He'd listen to it. And then when he thought it was just about right, quickly, we mean very quickly, out of the ice water, into the kettle, out of the kettle, into the ice water. He would feel it to decide what the temperature was. Now, don't do that at home. That's a bad idea. Can we do that with Stacy's finger just for fun? No, I don't think that would be a good idea. Not a good idea at all. Oh, sure. Now, the equipment that we use here is antique, and it's just the equipment, not the people. The stove is over 85 years old. It's a typical candy maker stove. Vulcan Heart's name is on the front. Vulcan Heart is still making stoves in Louisville, believe it or not. 320 degrees, we're knocking off as much candy as we possibly can. Great-grandfather told us, waste not, want not. Just be really glad your fingers aren't under there at 320 degrees. And we're all glad, the candy makers, that we remembered to put those little iron bars down on the table. You see, if we forget to do that, we have to share the candy with the floor. Now Warren's going to begin to move those iron bars away from the candy, and if we're lucky, oh, we are lucky, the candy does not move with it. We say it's a little bit like an obedient dog. Now is, is this table, how, how cool is this table? The table is cold at room temperature to begin with. Oh, that's but amazing, we, how quickly. But we is. also can add cold water to cool the candy. If we need to right now, we don't. So the cold water cools the table? Cools the table if we need to, but at this point, I don't need to. And that was just wow. a matter of seconds that it went from, I know. from uh, boiling. Stage. Here goes the cinnamon oil. Cinnamon oil comes from China. It comes a long, long way to be in our Red Hots. A bottle of it's worth about $50. A little bit like the stained glass in a church window, don't you think? When the flavoring is mixed in by hand like this, each piece is just a little bit different than the piece next to it. Warren's going to be right here, facing this way, pulling out the candy, snipping it off, and putting it through that drop roll. Now Warren's going to cut off a little bit of the candy and put it through the machine. The sugar is there so that the candy doesn't stick to the wood. Also allows Gail to slide and glide the candy easily over the surface. Now as we're going through, you can see the squares, but you see from the back wall that we are not limited to squares. We could be doing little shelves, or maybe lemon drops, or hearts, or fruit slices, or scissors, or fish. We say we have pickles to puppy dogs up here. The machine that we're using here today was originally hand cranked. And we remember the days when you had to crank it through and you had to have a few muscles to make candy. Those days are gone. We have to make little red hots out of these long strips. And you can see that's why they're called cinnamon red hot drops. He gets to make a mess and get paid for it, right? Uh, a little closer in. 
Oh, see, Travis is I on the floor. I dropped one of yours. Look at this fresh candy, right, right, right there Cheers. in front of our eyes. You don't get them any fresher than this. Now we're here in the museum, and I walk by this contraption, and I'm like, "What is it?" So what is it? A 1928 candy vending machine. Right. Here. Tootsie roll. Now you see this little silver knob. You give that a good pull. Let it go. No, you haven't looked. Oh, ah. there it is. Did you get that? And there's two pieces in there. One for me. One for Mark. Well, we have a very strangely named candy here in this area, the Majeska, named after Helena Majeska, the woman that you see pictured here. She was an extremely famous, I mean Madonna famous, Polish-American actress of the late 1800s. In 1883, she was doing Ibsen's A Doll's House at the Macaulay Theater in Louisville. Busaths, a big candy factory at the time, asked if they could name a candy after her. She agreed, and forever after, we have this rather strange name for a caramel-covered marshmallow. We'll let you try this right. out here. There you go. Hand Is this wrapped. a great episode or what? Hmm. Speechless. Okay, guys, here's your dessert. Thank you very much. We need some real food now. I know, now that we've got our fill of candy, I think it's time to go have a little bit of lunch. Grab some lunch? Let's go. Well, Stacy, after visiting Shem's Confectionery, needless to say, we needed something not so sweet. That's right. So we, we kind of ate a, backwards today. We had dessert first. Sort we, had, of. So we had the sweet hit first, and we decided, you know, we could have eaten there. They have a nice little soda fountain sandwich shop. Very cute, shop. yes. But two we buildings down is Park Research Fiction. a little bit, yeah. Right, we wanted to hang out in this area of uh, Jefferson. It's a beautiful Bowl. building, too. It's got the original uh, tin roof uh, as well. Lots of cool artwork, and they have it's coffee. It's a really cute street, uh, Spring Street. It's got a lot of other little boutiques and shops to look at, so you can kind of spend an afternoon over here. Well, I got the Greek salad with grilled chicken. And I had the uh, Mediterranean chicken wrap, a whole wheat, uh, and a side of black bean soup. But what I was really eyeing uh, that we didn't show you is the black and blue panini. Which is what Mark had. That Mark had that was awesome. Blue cheese and roast beef. So yeah. if, if you would like more information about Shemps or Perfection, or if you have an idea for an upcoming podcast, please send it to go podcast, podcast at gotolobal.com. And maybe if you're lucky enough, we'll send you some of these homemade bourbon, bourbon balls. balls. I'm going to try those in a minute. So as always, you're looking at Louisville. Happy Valentine's Day. See you real soon. Cheers. So that's really, I saw that.